Bless you. See a notification. Oh, great. <laughs> we are live. It is hot, serving hot here on Hot Dish. Hello, everyone. My name is Tanith. Um, I am the vice president and board member here with No Divide Kansas City. And of course, we got a lovely small group here, an intimate setting, um, sharing intimate details of our favorite holiday traditions, as well as uh, some behind the scene year in review of our season, our 2020 season. Um, like I said, my name is Tanith. Uh, my pronouns are they and them. And I'm so excited to be here and to be joined by these three lovely human beings. Let's just kick it off. Whoever wants to go first, go first. Tell us who you are. All right, I'll kick it off. My name is Stacy. My pronouns are she, her. Happy to be here and to be, um, yeah, going over an insane year. So. Hey, I'm Emily. My pronouns are she, her. I'm happy to be here too. I'm JD. I use they or he. I'm one of the newer board members, so yeah, this is fun to do our first year in review, or at least my first year in review <laughs> with the organization, yeah. Gosh, it's going to get real exciting. Um, for those who are new that are just now joining us, uh, Notify KC um, is a nonprofit that utilizes the arts as um, a vehicle for stimulating social awareness, uh, participation in community, as well as community building. Uh, we partner with Kansas City-based artists, as well as other organizations to create artistic events that are focused on the stories of the uh, underserved and misrepresented here in the Kansas City area. So pretty neat stuff and you know COVID kind of threw a wrench in all of our plans you know moving forward into 2020 as I'm sure it did for you know everyone um you know not just on an organizational level but also a personal level professional level mental level a health level all the all the levels have been just kind of knocked to the ground and saddened but despite all that I still think we've had a pretty successful 2020 like let's yeah. talk about it let's talk about what we did and you know the successes that we did have because those are definitely worth celebrating yeah it was a um actually quite a year of growth for us i mean you know financially the nonprofit sector and the arts sector you know it's just like hit so hard um from this pandemic and um I think it was kind of like the consensus for no divide um, in terms of our response to um, be there to serve the artists in the way that we can, the community in the way that we can. So to provide um, paid opportunities for them. Um, and also in terms of getting back to uh, like how we can um, hold events to try to be on the solution side of um, possible live events that are still safe and uh, responsible. And, um, you know, so we, we did work uh, on a few live events uh, this fall, so yeah. Yeah, okay, so um, let's see. So it was basically kind of, uh, what do we do during the first half of our season since we do yearly seasons, right? We start in January and we end in November, December, um, hence why we're doing a year review. Um, and so uh, we expanded in June-ish, right? Like that's when JD and I joined the team. Um, as well as our other uh, new board members, Katarina, Alexi, who are not here tonight. They are busy <laughs> finishing up the year with all their other stuff because, um, you know, everything ends in December um, for whatever reason. I, I think that's a terrible idea. We should scrap it, do something new, right? Um, and so we, the team had expanded and, um, oh, I have a cat on a piano. And we did promise cats. So to show it's not a lie, oh, we got one, a lie. I have one too. We have another oh, black so one. Mad. Oh. You can stay. So not, no false advertisement in, in our posts. There are <laughs> definitely live cats and they're in charge of everything. Um, but I, I guess our big main, um, main fall event was uh, Stories Under the Stars uh, back in September. That was like kind of our, first kickoff, you know, with the new board, um, as well as, you know, trying to operate under 
life with COVID and trying to showcase that you can still have live events that are safe and, um, you know, absolutely doable. Yeah, does anyone want to start? I don't want to take too much time with that, with my own voice. Yeah, Stories Under the Stars, that was actually the first time that we met uh, Tanith, JD, and Katarina in, yeah. in person. And so, um, well, JD and I had met like, you know, four years ago, and I probably didn't remember, but. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> All of us were together, the new board. Yeah. Yeah, so that was really fun, and and I, I think we kind of vibed really well together, and um, for me at least, I was kind of tense, you know, setting everything up, and I get kind of uncomfortable um, around people and germs, so I think you all were, you know, super helpful to me and in setting up, so it was fun. It was fun for me. Yeah. What did you think, JD? Yeah, I mean, that was my first event to do with y'all. And I um, get not as too much uncomfortable around germs, but not comfortable around people, <laughs> like Emily said. Um, so I really want I value having, you know, an assigned role in a team in which that pushes me and motivates me and encourages me to kind of put myself out there, serve the community and give back because otherwise I might not feel able to do so on my own. So it's really nice people to, to do that. Um, especially to be able to do it for a community that has such need, uh, like the houseless community and just learning about that, learning about their experiences. I just really didn't learn a lot about that growing up or, you know, earlier in life, just feel very, felt very disconnected from that community and felt like I was sort of implicitly or explicitly taught to treat them like they're untouchable, which is awful. Like we're all kind of taught this idea that like once you don't have a home when you don't have money when you're not independent and supporting yourself um that you you don't have as much dignity and that you don't have you don't deserve the time of day as much you don't get the same attention um as a human being that other people do um so being able to, to do an event for the houseless community was meaningful for me for sure and i learned a lot yeah that's really interesting that you say that about like the the role helping you to like also just show up to social <laughs> events because that's how I feel too like I mean I am an introvert I love alone time and I'm like totally fine actually in quarantine just like never seen anybody ever except for Emily but um yeah I feel that way like just thinking about no divide and like creating events and um that dichotomy because like usually events are like a scary thing for me just in general and like just forcing myself to go and and um you know kind of break that bubble and and once I'm there I can kind of turn on like a more extroverted kind of thing for me but but like it's really tiring and like exhausting and after events I'm just thinking about like every single thing that was said and so it's interesting having that role and kind of organizing um, is actually more enjoyable because I have a task I have you know I'm not there just to enjoy it I'm, I'm there to work and stuff and that actually like really helps me I think that helps that's like your, your thing too Emily right yeah for sure for sure I, I I was right there with you JD when you said you sometimes struggle um being around people and I also really appreciate what you said uh, uh about the houseless community and um, I, I very much enjoyed hearing those stories and I do want to shout out, um, Care on the Boulevard and Free Hot Soup and our, uh, board member Liz Pendleton as well was one of the speakers, um, cause she, she previously experienced houseless homelessness. Um, so yeah. And Alexi. and Alexi, Alexi too, our new board member. Yeah, that's true. Oh, and Sharon Rodriguez. So shout out yeah. to all of them. Yeah, I think, um. Yeah, there was great uh, promise in that event. I think it really, it's its always amazing to me, just, you know, storytelling and that's basically our mission and um, how much it really brings people together and how much, you know, it, it's really empowering for those people that are able to share their stories. And um, I just love the, the connection that you feel on those types of events. And 
So hopefully we can do more of that in the future. Um, and then we didn't mention like Tanith is, Tanith and JD are both new board members but we have recently, um, you know, uh, Tanith has stepped into our new vice president role, which is fantastic. Mostly we were just talking about introverts and I feel like, Tanith, do you like, do you identify as an extrovert, Tanith? Because that- I'm, I'm definitely an extrovert. So I'm just like, yeah. oh goodness. It was a completely opposite experience for me. Like I love doing that stuff. I love talking with people. I also do a lot of um, organizing outside of No Divide KC. I work with a, um, a tenant-led group called Rent Zero Kansas, who actually um, is trying to combat the housing crisis and the eviction crisis that's going on right now um, in the state of Kansas. And like we, we talk about sharing stories, and that is so integral to any type of organizing um, because it humanizes all of us, right? It shows that we are human beings, that we we are more than what people perceive us to be. And that like these perceptions of homeless and unhoused communities that we were taught, you know, growing up as them being untouchable as JD was explaining earlier, um, you have to challenge that because losing your home losing money, losing all of that does not stop your worth as a human being. And um, we're, we're, we're talking to so many people across the state that are just getting kicked out of their homes because people are exploiting loopholes or they just don't want them there. And like, it doesn't matter if they have the money or not, if they have an excuse to get rid of you, why not? And like, um, you know, a lot of protections are leaving at the end of the month. And so like, that Stories Under the Stars was so impactful. And actually a few people from my organization showed up so they could listen and um, be a part of the community in that way. Um, so it's it was definitely a very powerful and impactful event that we did. And I, I would love to do more in, in the future because um, you know they, they are very often unheard. Um, and that's just not right. That ain't right, as we say. <laughs> um, so yeah, that went really well. And then we had, you know, another big event about a month, a month later that we were planning simultaneously, um, which was our first annual Queer Narratives Festival, um, which is uplifting um, and sharing um, the queer communities, the LGBTQ, AI plus, you know, the professional gays. Um, <laughs> as the internet likes to call them, you know, when you, when you go pro. Um, <laughs> um, and uplifting these artists, um, sharing their story and what it means for them to be queer and what that is for them. So let's talk about that. Woohoo. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting to note because um, Tanith and JD uh, and all, we, we assembled this kind of new team in, in June. Um, and so the season was already set. And actually at the beginning of the year, we didn't think that Queer Narratives would be like a full festival. Um, at that time we were thinking like, you know, oh, why don't we do a, a queer dance series? Um, because that's just, we had some connections there and thought it would be really interesting. And, you know, uh, video series is something that we've done in the past. And um, it was floated to us. Actually, John, wonderful John Chittam, is the person who technically started the Queer Narratives Festival. He, like, launched it as, or he threw out the idea of doing an annual festival that could kind of, um, you know, be that, that staple in our our programming and, and uh, like this, th that was just the perfect idea. Um, and so it was kind of like DIY this year uh, in terms of our budget and like, you know, we came up with the idea it's going to be a full festival and it just kind of like we had to get the call out and we had to do all the stuff like and it was, um, it was really, yeah, uh, um, kind of a whole thing this year. So it was, it was cool to see it point to fruition definitely and I'm just, like really, really excited about like what it what it can um, become over the next few years so it's cool. Emily JD but did you have fun at the event what did you think like yeah yeah I mean it was a big challenge um switching it from indoor to outdoor um 
But yeah, it was really exciting for me to see, you know, when we put the call out, um, to see all of the interests. And I think probably both of you heard about us through queer narratives or some, you know, at least uh, that was one of the connections. And so I, I, I was just really excited by that. And then, um, you know, the day of you all worked so hard to get that visual art exhibit up and yeah, it was really exciting. We had some, we had some really incredible performers. And so it was a good time. It was a good time to get the community together. It was a little, um, you know, having masks at a festival, it, it, it felt bizarre, but um, it's still, it's still, it was Halloween. So, you know, masks, they go hand in hand. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, it was, yeah, it was a lot of work. We had help even from like just the artists volunteering. <laughs> I know Wolf Brack helped a lot. Um, it was really cool to get to um, organize all that and to set up the visual art because that's not my medium. And so getting to see and be able to have like close contact with really, really cool visual art and learn about kind of how that's set up and how you curate um, was really interesting for me. And then it was just a, just a fun event. It was a fun day. Um, it was fun to, it was, I love that we had such a big variety of different art forms. I mean, we had the visual art, but then within the visual art, there was sculpture and there were different media and there was video and there was comedy and there was poetry and there was dance and there was rap. I mean, it was just so many different things and getting to appreciate everyone's different perspectives was really cool. Yeah, I definitely think that that's something that I really care about is um like how to what uh, an opportunity for an artist is and like what you know what they really need and what is like a good experience for them um because I'm an I'm an artist too and like I have a degree that like means like one career but that I'm not I didn't follow that path and it's been really difficult for me to find opportunities that um, I like that my work fits into that, like, I, I believe in the, the mission and, you know, like, um, and, uh, you know, that I'm not paying $50 to submit an application for, or I think that's, anyway, I could go off, but like, <laughs> so, um, that's a really big area, I think, for No Divide is, like, crafting calls that are really for artists and giving them, you know, what they really need out of it opportunity um so yeah we just crafted one the the come as you are um is is out now yeah. and we'll we'll talk about that a little later and i'm really excited about it um but i think for now we need to like rest you know <laughs> like despite despite everything or perhaps in spite of everything uh i think a, some good rest and relaxation and celebration you know like in spite of we had this amazing year of 2020 um you know laughing laughing in the face of danger you know a la simba from the lion king um but like it's also my favorite season, which is winter holiday season, um, because there's just so many that are happening around this time of the year. Um, and like, it's my, it's my favorite because it's dark, it's cold. And then you get to spend time with your chosen family, blood relatives, friends, you know, the people you like, maybe don't like, and I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but hopefully, hopefully mostly with people you like. Uh, and so like, this year is going to be different, right? Everybody has to hopefully stay home um, and stay safe and stay healthy. Um, and it's just going to be a little bit different this year. And so I just, I wanted to get your guys' opinions. Like what are some of your favorite things to do around the holidays? Do you just not care for the holidays? Like what, what's that? Tell me about like how you celebrate or not celebrate during this time. As you can see, I have my Yule tree up here in the background. Um, I, I'm a, a Yule family, which has been adopted into modern day Christmas. Uh, and so I don't, I can't burn a Yule log this year because I just don't have the means to. I don't have a fireplace, no fire pit, no fires. <sighs> but, you know, you can make a Yule cake, like a Yule cake instead of a Yule log. 
and then yeah. you can eat it instead. So that's a really fun tradition for me. I always make a mess in the kitchen because I have no idea what I'm doing. Um, and like, I just, my favorite thing about the holidays are the desserts and spending time with the people I love. So what about you? What about you? Tell me, tell me, tell me. Tell, tell me about your Yule cake. What is the flavoring and does it look like a log? Um, so I guess the, the, like the way I make it, I usually make like, um, <laughs> I keep thinking of ho-hos from Hostess oh, yeah, where yeah. they're like those Girl spiral pack. cakes where, so like my, I, I just do like basic vanilla white cake with a cream inside. And like, there are some people who do make it look like a log. Um, and they get real fancy with their icing technique. And I'm just, I'm not a baker. I, my mom is, and I just did not inherit that skill from her. Um, mm -hmm. I can cook like my dad, but I cannot bake like my mom. And I'm just ugh, missed opportunity right there. Right. Uh, but, um, I just, I just ice it as nice as I can and I go, okay, we're ready to go. Let, go. let them eat cake, but for yeah. real. <laughs> Emily is the baker in our house. I am with you, Tana. It's like, not for me. I can cook because I don't want to follow specific directions very closely. <laughs> Definitely a lot more freedom in cooking than with baking. Unless like you know what you're doing as a baker. And then I, I watched a friend of mine just whip out biscuits out of nowhere. And I'm just like, how even? Yeah. <laughs> how did you do that? And without measuring, how did you do that? Like... Right. No big deal. It's okay. <laughs> Don't take that note, Emily. Keep measuring, please. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes I, I made a few batches of cookies and each time they turned out a bit different. They were all good, but you know, different consistencies, different textures. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We've come up with a, like our official holiday cookie, which is a big, I think is great because I love eating the cookies. Uh. Tell us the secret. We want to know. Everyone wants to know. It's not tough. It's a pecan melt away. Um, mm -hmm. So no eggs. It's butter, powdered sugar, flour. That's and pecans. That's it. Do you do you bake it or is it? A you do. Egg? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah so you mix all that together, roll it in a ball, <gasps> and then bake it for ten minutes at three fifty. I think we're going to have to share like some recipes after we're done <laughs> so that uh, other people may enjoy our holiday treats. Oh yeah. yeah. So good. <laughs> I, I, I think I like them more than Emily does. You do. I don't really know. Just, okay. just well, inhale them. You're just like, oh. I do. I'm like <laughs> pestering her, make more cookies, make more cookies. They we just, have some now. Yeah. Ugh, I know. I'm thinking about them right now. <laughs> JD, what about you? Any food, holiday traditions, um, anything that you enjoy during this time of the year or perhaps not enjoy? Um, I mean, I don't personally like celebrate any of the holidays because I'm not like religious and I'm not very spiritual. <laughs> um, but uh, it just means that I do more singing since I'm a choral singer and I have a job at an Episcopal church, which is a very like safe affirming Episcopal church that I we like to be at which is uh, St. Mary's Episcopal in downtown KC so I'll be doing more singing um, and we're thankfully able to now start doing trios and quartets in the church uh, with distancing with masks on for a while we were just doing um, like we had just had a solo cantor or just one at a time so it's nice to be able to like sing um, in like multiple harmonies again <laughs> so we'll be doing that um, Otherwise, um, I should be able to see family. We'll, we'll just like, we just split my family up so that it's two smaller groups instead of one big group so that it's safer. Uh, so that's what we did for Thanksgiving. Um, and then we're gonna do that again for what the rest of my family celebrates is Christmas. Uh, so I'll visit them. Um, and food wise, like for Thanksgiving, we do a, you know, quote unquote American Thanksgiving with like ham and turkey and lots of casseroles and stuff. Mm. Um, but then for Christmas, we usually, um, do Indian food, which is our culture. Um, and so my mom will usually make biryani, which is uh, like a spicy rice pilaf. It's slow cooked and slow roasted in the oven. And, you know, everyone has their own variant. Like it has a regional variants and household versions. So of course my mom's is the best to me. <laughs> so I get to have that. So that'll be good. Oh, moms always make the best food. Like yes. regardless of where you're from or what your culture is, like if you have a mom or a mom figure, their food is like the ultimate comfort food. 
Yeah. And it just makes you feel safe and warm and snuggly and like everything's going to turn out all right. Oh, that's wonderful. JD, um, JD, do you like like Indian food in Kansas City or are you just like, ugh, not even? I haven't tried much. The one place that my family really likes is, uh, I think it's either Overland Park or Olathe. So it's on the Kansas side. It's called Ruchi, R-U-C-H-I. And that has like really authentic, spicy South Indian food. My family is South Indian. So if y'all haven't ever tried that, I highly recommend that. I think, they, I think they're still there. Yeah. Okay, we got to check. Are they off of Medcalf? Probably, yeah. I think I've been there once. And I had this like delicious um, fried paneer kebab, if you will. Ooh, yeah. And it was just deliciously salty. And I, I love paneer cheese anyway. Yeah. It's, it's like it's, my mind has been blown. I was like, I've been missing out on so much. <laughs> yeah, it's the best. We have one spot that I feel like, you know, that's just our spot um but when we travel and stuff like indian we that's it's just the best it's so good <laughs> and really great i'm a vegetarian and so like just great vegetarian oh, yeah. so easy to eat vegetarian in indian food mm -hmm. sometimes it's easier to eat vegetarian in indian food like <laughs> in india like um usually it's specified like non-veg if it's non-vegetarian like if a restaurant has meat <laughs> it won't say it's vegetarian it'll say it's non-vegetarian the opposite of what we do <laughs> here in uh, meat loving kansas city um, <laughs> and like i'm vegetarian too so <laughs> i'm just like yeah i get it <laughs> um uh, any like favorite memories during this time of year? Um, I, I'll offer one up. Last year was a particularly uh, difficult Christmas for our Christmas season for me. Um, a lot of drama in the family. I won't go into detail because um, like that's not the important part. However, um, a friend of mine was going through something similar with her own family. And so we decided to meet up on Christmas Day. And we called it Friendsmas. And we just invited a bunch of people who were, you know, struggling with their families or this time of year just wasn't um, a good time of year, always brought up like bad memories or, you know, from childhood or adulthood. And we're like, you know what, we're going to cook a dinner together. Um, we'll, we'll have some drinks, we'll, you know, it, it have desserts and like it just turned into this really big, wonderful, um, affirming um party of our identities of our personhood and it just made me understand that like I didn't hate the holiday but I hate the, hated the situation that I was in um and so like I'm I mean I'm wearing a sweater that says when you're dead inside but it's Christmas and it has some very knockoff nightmare before <laughs> Christmas uh, characters on it um but like I love the holidays just because of like like you get close together in the, the darkest, coldest months of the year. Uh, and it doesn't have to be religious or spiritual. Um, but, you know, when the sun goes down at 430, you just get sad. <laughs> yeah, I really think that's a great way of saying it, you know, because the, you know, commercialism of, of Christmas and all that is is not for me and you know um it's not the best um but i yeah i mean i'm on the same page i love winter i love cold i love darkness and um holidays and, and but um i would just like i was i went to rehab over new year's <laughs> i was like i wound up in rehab uh, like two days after christmas in 2011 and it was a horrible thing and I you know I, I was um you know not able to watch the ball drop it, it was just a weird experience you know being in in a treatment center over the new years and going into 2012 and um so I am very kind of thoughtful around this time of year and I'm like just so so grateful to not not be in that situation and to, um, you know, and I also think about the people that are in those centers and at this time of year and, and knowing that they are there because the people are always in there and um, just, yeah, just like 
course of life and another year and you know I feel like holidays are also kind of good for that like this is where we are this year this is where we were last year maybe this is where we will be next year you know and so I, I also like that about it and thinking about life and time and stuff so yeah yeah and for me um you know, I've been called a, a Grinch and a Scrooge and uh, various, you know, names like that. Early and onset grouch. An early onset grouch. Uh, <laughs> <Very early. laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, I, I since since being with Stacy, we've we've been together for five years, and uh, she loves Christmas, and she just gets this very pure joy out of holiday time and out of holiday things and smells and um you know watching that kind of pure joy can kind of pull me out of my grouchiness sometimes and um and I really try obviously because I care about her I I I try to to like Christmas more and I do I think so last year one memory I have is that we had just moved into this house together and um, we, we drove up to, to get a Christmas tree and it was a whole experience and then we set it up and it was super cute and like, I don't know, kind of the, the, the making of a new tradition. And even now the guy at the, the store, he cut off like the end of the tree and he was like, here, you can turn this into a Christmas ornament and I can see it sitting right over there in a decorative place. So yeah, it kind of melts my uh, my Grinch heart or whatever. <laughs> or three sizes as big, right? Oh yeah, yeah, it's growing. That's, the, yeah, that's yeah, the thing. Size, not maybe three, but like a little, like quarter bit. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to melt <laughs> anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I was doing the opposite. I was, so if we go with the Grinch analogy, it it's increasing my heart size. <laughs> You're a Grinch too, JD? I mean, I guess I can be a little bit just because like I said, I don't really personally celebrate anything. Um, and right now, uh, the store I work in for my day job is playing nonstop Christmas music. And so I like hate the word Christmas right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just because I've heard so much, so many million versions of like do the same like 10 songs. Mm -hmm. um, but no, like the one memory that I'm thinking of that's on my mind now because we were talking about food so much and now I'm hungry um, <laughs> uh, was Thanksgiving of 2017. Um, that was the school year that I was studying abroad in the UK. Um, and so, of course, they don't do Thanksgiving there, but I was friends with a lot of other American students studying abroad. Uh, and so we all got together in one of the houses for one of the university's visiting students. They have their own house there. Uh, so we got together there and it was a big kitchen. So we all cooked our favorite stuff. So I got to make like my favorite cheesy potato casserole that took like four hours in the oven because I had to use fresh potatoes because they don't have like frozen hash brown potatoes over there. <laughs> that I can no, they don't. <laughs> so, and also their cheese is weird and it was hard to find sour cream, <laughs> but it turned out good. It was good. It was, it was really fun. Uh, I just <laughs> used to be with like all my new friends that I had made that term, uh, not feel alone and have good food. It was good. I have a similar Thanksgiving story because in 2011, 2012, I was in the UK. I was in Belfast and um, we did our, our house had nine of us, nine international students and living in one flat and you could hear every little bit of everybody's business. And I mean, everybody's business, wink, wink. Um, and so, and so we ended up like doing a lot of celebrations of our various holidays um, throughout the year. And so we would cook our favorite foods and like explain why they were culturally important or like why we just, you know, love that food and the comfort it brought us. And it like, I love those experiences because food and just distance just brings everybody together, you know? And that's just so cool because then you're celebrating like what comes next, right? Like you're looking towards the future. You're excited for the what's to come. Um, and like this year fears extra dark and bleak just because of the pandemic on top of, you know, normal winter uh, BS or I guess the, the huge. Um, but I think, you know, here at No Divide, we have some really cool things that we're looking forward to um, for next season. 
Um, <laughs> segue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and so let's let's talk about that. Like, what do we have to look forward to in 2021, uh, which just still feels like a million years away, despite you know being less than 30 days, less than 20 days away. <laughs> So let's let's get into it. What do we have going next year? So much stuff. I'm so excited. This is such a cool time for No Divide. Like every year is like such a big step forward. You know, it's just really exciting. Um, JD, do you want to talk about the Come As You Are thing and how we kind of put that together? Yeah. Um, so I've been wanting to do more on the administrative and planning side of like the music composition world and the quote unquote new music world and since that's um, my area uh, and so Stacy and that's Stacy's background as well she approached me and was like do you want to try and put something together that kind of approaches that world and that culture in a different way and maybe seeks to um, interrogate it in a new way um, so we came up with this, uh, we kind of sort of first identified what we felt were problems in this culture of our field um, and then it kind of clinched on the phrase, come as you are, and the feeling that often in classical music, people don't feel that they can come as they are. People feel like they, it's beyond their understanding or uh, they have to be extra formal and put together in a certain way and behaving a certain way at those events that makes them feel unnatural um, or that maybe the music doesn't speak to them or whatnot. And of course, when you, do study classical music and you learn about it, you can find that that's not inherently the case, but that doesn't change the fact that for a lot of people that feels like the case. And that means that a lot of people aren't being reached with that music. Um, and I want everyone to be able to be reached by that music and appreciate it. And I think contemporary classical music, you know, it's what's happening right now. And it's what we can use to respond to culture in the here and now. Um, and so the idea was to, encourage people whom we're asking to submit to a call for proposals to design a proposal that speaks to this theme of vulnerability. Um, and a lot of that word gets thrown around a lot in like nonprofit and art spaces, I think vulnerability, but I think there's still more to explore with it because for a lot of us, there's just not a way of being or a way of interacting or a way of reaching out to people or a way of sharing that we're taught. So we're still unlearning a lot of things. We're learning shame. Uh, a lot of this for me personally came out of the work of Brene Brown, who is a sociologist, sociological researcher. And her research is focused on shame and vulnerability. And she describes shame uh, by comparing it to guilt. And guilt is like saying, I did something bad, whereas shame is like saying, I am bad. Um, and being mentally ill, like that type, those type of thought processes are things that I have to unlearn in order to be well. Um, and she describes vulnerability as showing up even in uncertainty. Uh, so combating shame can look like being vulnerable and showing up in uncertainty. It can look like sharing even in uncertainty. Um, so we wanted participants to, first of all, be from any background, not necessarily from a classical background, not necessarily needing to notate things uh, in a classical way uh, for like classical music um, and have a lot of freedom in what they design their proposal around and design an experience that engages the audience uh, in a way that, you know, they're welcome to come as they are because you're setting the example by coming as you are. So what does it mean to show up in uncertainty? What does it mean to show up as a musician, as a creator? What does it mean to show up as a marginalized person? What does it mean to share uh, in affirming and productive ways? Uh, and so right now the call is out. Uh, so you can visit the website, notifykc.org. Uh, and you can read about that and submit, uh, access the submission form there. Uh, so far we have seven submissions and we're hoping to get more. The deadline is December 31st. Yeah. Oh, what a so good project. That's oh, so neat. I'm You're really so excited. Sorry. I'm just gushing how excited I am. Please, Stacey, continue. Uh, it's just one of those Zoom things, you know, like, oh, oh, oh. all right. Um, <laughs> Um, you're so good at talking about that, JD, really. Like I have any time that I try to like have that conversation, like again, Emily knows, like I just like divulge into like a lot of anger. <laughs> 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 and like just general rant. Um, so I really appreciate uh you articulating in that way. And um 
so yeah it's 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 circulating like and um yeah it's a it's an area that i have a lot of feelings about i mean i have a master's degree that's why i moved here to study composition at umkc um and i just felt you know really uncomfortable kind of through that process that music school process a lot of the time uh you know just being a woman mostly and struggling with like my music and my style of music and being I was um, insecure that the fact that my music is emotional, which is so stupid to me, and I feel like what, <laughs> but like um, that that I'm setting a bad example as a woman. Um, you know that oh, women are that emotional kind of being over there, and especially in my field as an electronic um, composer, you know my strengths are not. Um, that of a lot of men which is just like a lot of technique and kind of um intellectual and um uh technological concept and and uh, and things that's not really what interests me more and so um it's just been it just makes me feel insecure and and like i represent all women everywhere you know and if i'm not being something to someone that that speaks on behalf of like all women and i feel like you know a lot of um people who are marginalized feel that way and so anyway i'm very excited about this call because i think it'll be a healing process for me to kind of doing a, a new a, a new music event with no divide so that's gonna be exciting yeah, yeah. Vulnerability is scary, regardless of <laughs> where you're at or what you're doing. So thank you both, Stacy and JD, for expressing like your own vulnerabilities and just even just touching on the subject of um, come as you are um, and being here as you are with us right now. Um, that takes a lot of guts. Uh, and I think the bravest thing anybody can do is be vulnerable and and show their uh, feelings and you know whether it's ranging from angry to sad to to shame or guilt uh it takes a lot of guts to to be vulnerable so i'm very excited um to see uh the more submissions that we get to see what the other um uh, musicians and artists of kansas city also feel um regarding um coming into the space and to, to celebrating their vulnerability with us. Um, again, you can apply on our website, nodividekc.org, and submissions are open through the end of the month on the 31st. Um, and uh, another uh, new music event that we will be doing is called Win Time, which originally was gonna be in 2020, but then COVID hit. Uh, and so now it's gonna be in 2021. Um, Stacy, do you wanna talk about that? Yeah, um, that's in partnership with Charlotte Street Foundation. And so as um, a lot of people know, Charlotte Street is has this brand new uh, space opening um, and it's beautiful and it's just like equipped with just all kinds of things. It's going to be huge aid to artists. Um, and so one time is going to premiere in that new theater. Um, it's uh, new music I'm composing and um, it's got three actors and three musicians, and it's just kind of an interesting coming of age uh, journey um, that isn't straight theater or musical theater or new music. It's, it's just kind of a whole um, kind of exploration of all of those things. And so I'm really excited about that. Um, and yeah, I guess technically that is also my um, presentation as the, um, 2020 generative um 2020 generative performing artist fellow so um thank you charlotte street <laughs> <laughs> much professional <laughs> um and then um of course we're going to do queer narratives festival the sequel um we can't have a first annual with at least having a, you know a second one right uh just it's kind of how it works or maybe we could do like a pre-sequel or a prequel or i don't know how people do things anymore time is an illusion it's not real right uh, and so um 
we'll we'll be soon announcing uh, the call for that probably um, early into 2021 season. Um, so keep an eye out for that um, on our website and our socials. Um, but uh, for now, the visual artists that participated in uh, this year's uh, festival, uh, you can see them um, virtually um, with Becco Gallery. Um, that's B as in boy, E as in Elliot Page, C as in cats, and O as in oh yes. Becco Gallery um, on Instagram, all one word. So you can follow there or um, in uh, early January, um, they will be at Interurban Art House um, physically. So you can go to the building over in Overland Park to, um, to stand in awe of these beautiful pieces um, from our uh, visual artists. And so I'm pretty excited about that and planning, you know, the next, the next big thing for um, queer narratives. Um, anything to add on that? I have, did I cover it all? Did I leave all the important things out? You know? Yeah, just bigger and better. It's gonna be, you know, um, we're gonna improve on all the things that, that we discussed. You know, we broke it down this year's festival with all of our board members. And, um, you know, we've heard a lot of inputs from some of the artists and things. And so, um, yeah, we are excited to just kind of um, keep moving right along and, um, you know, make this the best possible festival that it can be for everyone. So um, it's gonna be good. It might be this summer. I think we're um, thinking about it being in end of July next year instead of the fall. So summer party. <laughs> heat wave um and of course we'll be doing some more hot dishes which your regular um hostess with the mostest nita will be back um uh, fingers crossed because she's so wonderful um she'll be back with uh, some more amazing topics and um uh, round tables to discuss uh, various different things going on in the Kansas City artist community. Um, so we're still planning that. So we've got some really cool things to look forward to, and we hope that all of you will be a part of it with us. Um, and but I think I think it's time for us to take a really long nap. <laughs> Just a really long nap. Wake up in 2021 and say, okay, let's do it. Yeah. I'm ready. <laughs> Let's go. Um, but thank you, Stacey, JD, and Emily for spending the evening with me. And of course, thank you to everyone who's watching live with us right now over on the Book of Faces. Um, we're so excited for uh, what's coming up. And um, from our family to yours, <laughs> stay safe. Look at that. <laughs> Look at butts. Your cat has a beautiful butt. <laughs> Pro tip, if a cat shows you their butt, they're saying, look at what a good job I did. <laughs> Showing off. Like, that's a show off. Like, great job. Great ass. Ugh. She kind of has a stinky butt, and that's a concern. <laughs> that be a concern. Yeah. Yeah. It looks great. <laughs> <laughs> um, but for our family to yours, stay safe, stay healthy, and we hope to see you next year. And... Have a good night. Bye. 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 Bye.